Good morning, everyone. Um, today, I want to start with a personal story, um, which is basically the reason why I'm here today and uh, why I do what I do. Most of you know that I'm actually really passionate about the question, what it takes to inspire, to empower, engage, and mobilize people to, to get active. Um, and I used to work in politics for quite a long time. Um, and no day went by where we uh, explained ourselves that this is so much different in politics. And um, then I started Campaigning Bureau, my agency, with the aim of uh, applying those methods to corporate brands, to causes, to NGOs. And we got into conversations with the first brands and they said, you know, with brands, this is so much different. And we talked to and, and worked with beverage brands, so different, sports brands, so different. We started to internationalize our work, uh, did projects in Switzerland, Germany, consulting work in uh, Spain, Croatia, uh, Turkey. And you guess what they said? It's different. Um, needless to say that uh, the US and Europe is so different. <laughs> and this is really funny because um, I'm totally aware of the fact that uh, we live in different countries and talk different languages and uh, have different cultures um, and so on. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm absolutely convinced that we're all human beings. So I'm actually fascinated by the question, what we have in common and what we share rather than what makes us different. And I, I can tell you, I got some brain food for you today. Uh, prepared and uh, we're basically talking about the question why do we do what we do what causes us to show a certain behavior in a specific situation in a campaign for example and how do we actually influence this behavior every day we make a tremendous amount of decisions 400 billion bits of information every second 400 billion bits of information hammering into your brains every second. And you're still good looking. Um, so why is this the case? What do we do? How do we do that? It's more or less like this. This is what we do. We, we try to survive. We want to make our lives easy. We try to blend out most of the stuff. Or we use stories to simplify. Or we use triggers to make our lives easier. And this is what we're talking about today. Triggers are kind of rules, kind of fixed patterns that reduce the amount of thinking and make life more comfortable. It's more or less like, if this, then that. So we've lots of those triggers built in. And I want to talk about three of them today. Uh, three of them basically based on the work of the great scientist uh, Cialdini, who did a lot of work uh, on this, and uh, the literature will be part of the slides afterwards. Um, I'm going to show you some experience and, I think mostly important, uh, some practical experience from our work where we applied those principles. So, let's jump right in. The first principle, reciprocity. If you do something for me, I do something for you. Sounds like the godfather. Maybe it isn't. Um, second principle, consistency. If others do, then it's probably, uh, sorry, the social proof. Um, if others do, then it's probably right. And the third thing is consistency. If you think something about yourself, then you'll act accordingly. Um, and we'll have a look at each of them. So, we're going to start with reciprocity. Reciprocity is more or less the good old story of give and take. If someone does you a, fail a favor, sorry, not a failure, uh, a favor, uh, you're feeling kind of obliged, or, uh, kind of indebted. Um, you want to do something good for this person too. For example, this is the reason why lots of fundraising letters contain little gifts or presents, or why the bill in the restaurant uh, comes with a little chocolate or, or some sweet. But here's one facet that uh, impressed me most. If someone or if you are 
denying someone a favor, it actually creates the same effect. Let's take the following experiment to explain this. Students were asked if they would be willing to supervise a group of uh, young offenders during a day trip into the zoo. 17% um, agreed. In a second experiment, uh, another group of students uh, has been asked if they were willing to yeah, uh, be a kind of peer consultant twice a week over a period of two years to this group. No one agreed. But after they denied, they were asked the smaller bit, the day trip, and 50% agreed. So how does that work? That's the balance we're looking for in our lives. Let's take another example. Same story when it comes to, to blood donations. Lars is we'll be talking about. First group of volunteers had been asked if they were willing to yeah, contribute two hours of voluntary work. 27%, sorry, 29% agreed. The second group had been asked if they would be willing to commit on two years voluntary work. Again, almost no one agreed. After that, they were asked the smaller bit, and then 76%, so a three times higher, uh, uh, three times higher amount, uh, agreed to this bit. And what we did, and Lars will talk about that today, and I'll only pick out uh, one detail. We applied this together with the Red Cross here in Austria to a campaign, and I'll only point out this detail. People were asked to help and support the campaign, and um, about 23.8% 20, uh, of the people who went directly to the help and support page uh, agreed to help. On the other part of the website, we had this uh, quick check, this quick survey people could do. After the quick check, they were asked to commit on a blood donation within two weeks. Those who said yes could schedule an appointment, and those who said no were asked to help otherwise. And surprise, 46.3% said yes. So this is reciprocity put into practice. The second principle, the social proof. What is the social proof? We view behavior as more correct in a given situation to the degree as we can see others performing it. Let me give you a very simple example. You're standing on the street and looking up in the sky. Maybe no one will stop and, and join you watching the sky. If three of your friends will join you, the number of people stopping increases by a factor of four. You can observe this uh, in the inner city of Vienna, where all these street artists are. Um, so this is the social proof. Another example for the social proof is it's scientifically proven that pre-recorded laughter or pre-recorded applause lets the audience feel the performance of someone more qualitative than without. So if others are applauding, you feel the performance better. Maybe we should give this a try, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll let you know if this increased my feedback. Um, by the way, this is why Abercrombie & Fitch works, right? You know the lines around the shops. And there's a great campaign that uh, applied this principle. It's not a campaign of our, of, your, of, of Campaigning Bureau. Uh, it's a, a US campaign, but I love it, and, and this is why I show it to you. It's a campaign of uh, an US energy company, or to be precise, uh, US energy saving company. A company called Opower tried to incentivize uh, citizens of a US city to uh, turn down their air condition when they're not at home. Sounds like a challenge, I think, yeah. Um, and what they did, they put tiny little notices on their doors. Basically with those three, uh, yeah, uh, those three messages. Save money, save the planet, be a good citizen, summed up. Which one of those do you think worked best? None of them showed any impact. So they tested the fourth. Your neighbor does better. <laughs> and this was the only one 
showing really a significant decrease in energy consumption. Crazy, right? And we tried to apply this principle to a campaign we, we did last year uh, with uh, Austrian Foreign Minister Sebastian Kurz during his election campaign. Um, of course, we did what all politicians do during a campaign. We launched a personal committee where you could sign up and be part of, uh, part of the campaign and part of the crowd. And we showed lots of faces uh, to show people that they are in good company. But we, we did more. We, we actually revolutionized the way persona committees work here uh, yeah, in Austria and in, in, in our countries here. Um, we added the social proof. And how we did that was we empowered people to run their own campaigns, to run their own committees. And with respect to the social, social proof, access their social networks with it. And with it, put peer pressure, of course, to their friends and families. Um, because you were not asked to sign up on a campaign page. You were asked to sign up on your son's, your daughter's, or your friend's campaign page. You know? And at the end of the day, this accounted for more than 40% of all supporters in this campaign. The third principle is the principle of commitment and consistency. To my mind, the most, one of the most important and valuable triggers in, in this case, um, especially combined with the social proof. Let's start again with some brain food. Imagine you're lying at the beach. I know, hardly to imagine uh, these times, but um, imagine you're lying at the beach, uh, your beach radio turned on, um, and you want to go for a pina colada. Well deserved, absolutely. Um, and a thief tried to steal your beach radio. 20 people around, how many of them do you think tried to help and catch the thief? Hmm. Four. Four of them. Second experiment, you asked each of them personally if they would take care for your radio during your absence and then went away. How many of them do you think uh, tried to catch the thief? Afterwards, 19, right? So this is the principle of commitment and consistency. It's more likely that you're doing something when you've committed before. This also works with restaurants, for example. Restaurants uh, have huge problems with no-shows, which is basically when you are doing a reservation and uh, not showing up uh, on time or, or at all. Um, and what they did, they decreased the no-show rate from 30 to 10% only by adding a simple question to the reservation dialogue. And the simple question was, could you please inform us when you're changing your plans? Then, then they waited for a yes. This is fundamental. And this is it. They decreased from 30 to 10%. Commitment and consistency can also mean that uh, you commit by setting a first step in a series of steps, for example, uh, and then be consistent in completing the process. I got one example here that uh, we did together with uh, the largest radio broadcasting uh, station in Austria, O3, where absolutely amazing people with a, a crazy drive of innovation are at work. And it was a dry Christmas shopping. Uh, is an annual promotion together with the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, people can send their Christmas shopping bills and uh, send in their Christmas shopping bills and win back their purchases in terms of money. And this year we stopped asking a thousand questions for this and only reduced it to a simple square. A simple square where you, you could drag and drop your bill. That's it. After it, uh, we uh, let them answer all the necessary questions. But in the first step, it was only drag and drop your bill. And absolutely incredible, because this uh, promotion was already on a very high level, participation numbers increased by 50%. Because people committed in the first step by taking part by drag and drop, so it was more likely that they actually completed the process. Another example, we did, uh, had the pleasure of working for a national referendum campaign in, in Switzerland. Um, and at its very core was a very simple one-click commitment. Say no. Yeah? That was it. And 
we increased supporter numbers by an incredible 700% there. Uh, only because making the first step super easy and uh, also we increased the following engagement incredibly. So, these were only three triggers <clears throat> that I showed you today. And honestly, at the very end, I have to tell you, this is not the whole story. Um, because what triggers do is triggers can shape behavior and shape the decision-making process with people. And the knowledge of triggers exists since decades. It's not really nothing new. But what triggers don't do, and I'm here with Annette, absolutely, they don't create meaning and purpose. And meaning and purpose, our values, our hopes, our dreams, desires, fears, those are the things that really drive us. And this is why what we do, what we do on a very fundamental basis. And this is why we stay tuned in a long-term relationship. And those drivers were far on the sea. And here's the thing what happened. Today we have access to all of them because this is what we do online every day with every click, with every interaction, with every like, with every tweet. We tell the world and all those who collect the data what drives us. We turn our inside out every day, every minute. And all that on a very individual basis. And the impact is amazing, I think. For all mission-driven companies, for all CSR projects, employee engagement projects, for all political-driven movements, of course, for all causes. And I'd say, let's take this knowledge and, and make something good out of it. Uh, let's help people do work and things that they love and make it easy to them and make something good of it out of it. And yeah, let's start today. Thank you very much. <laughs>